The Call of the Wild, Chapter 5. Uh, do not have it in front of me. The Toil and Trace of Tail is what I recall, but I think I'm missing a word there somewhere. Chapter 5 is all you really need. Chapter 5. I am appealing to y'all tonight from the mountaintop. The mountaintop of human pride in a good way. Not the negative pride. Not the ego. The idea of having a lofty vision for your life and for the people around you, even the strangers. Ladies and gentlemen, I witnessed racism today in my travels, and I don't know how much detail I'm going to get into it, but I uh, definitely, at the time, knew 100% that I was going to do a Google review on the establishment where I witnessed it. It was disgusting to me. It was uh, Anglo-Saxon, I'll say. How about white? It was a white man, older man, older than me, making fun of a little Mexican woman who didn't know what he was telling her in English. And when she let him know that she didn't speak English, he just shook his head and said, I don't care. And I happened to be there, and I speak Spanish. She was telling her to put in her, uh, like I said, I'm going to leave it for the Google review. But uh, anyway, the point is, um, he, you know, I confronted him because it was making me sick. And uh, it has to do with this chapter. So maybe that experience of mine today will make more sense as I talk about this chapter. Probably the biggest thing that stands out to me as significant in this chapter is the woman Mercedes. She sounds so cute. She just sounds like a little hottie. She's out on the Adirondack. What do you want, cat? No, you can stay in. Stop it. I'm recording. My cat wants me to go all the way across my living room to let her out, but I've already let her out four times. Okay, anyway, this is the call of the wild in here. Shut up. Sometimes I think it's okay to tell your cats to shut up because they just keep going. And it looks like it worked. Um, you got to understand, I'm not being rude to my cat, and I certainly would never beat my cat, which we're going to witness a beating like, like no other in this chapter tonight. Yeah, we only have 30 minutes, and we're on 3 minutes and 17 seconds, so I digress. Mercedes is the woman out on this trail, and uh, quite frankly, she sounds hot to me. I don't know. Um, as I was reading it, I was reminded of this movie. You know, I'm into movies, you know? I'm Riley on film. I That's my whole blog name. That's the brand of my podcast. I usually... Re I'm recording on Riley on film right now but this is literature and that's basically the two things I do is uh with my blog is I I review movies and I review literature it reminded me first of all I think tail has to do with Mercedes I I, I I'm sorry, you know, that's a vulgar term for a, a woman's ass, you know, tail. Um, I was in Walmart today, or was it today or yesterday? I think it was yesterday. You know, real early in the morning, I had to get something before work, and uh, <clears throat> there was this guy next to me looking at uh, ibuprofen. I was trying to get the something cheap, but, <clears throat> you know, I always run out of it. I get, I get really bad headaches, and... Uh, it seems like I've learned how to relax a little bit, but when they're really as bad as they were yesterday, I, I just need ibuprofen. And I didn't have any in my car. I usually always have a backup supply. But anyway, he's like, damn, Walmart has tail. And I looked over and this is really scantily clad young, probably, you know, 19, anywhere from 19 to 23, somewhere in there. 
And I agree, she was a very attractive young woman, but uh, it was pretty vulgar what he said. And so I can't help but think, like, introducing Mercedes here. Trace, I know. I know what Trace means. Trace has to do with family. Because you've got the two brothers, and they both have enormous egos. I guess when you're talking about two men, you probably shouldn't use the word enormous because everybody assumes you're going to talk about their penis size. But no, enormous egos, okay? Um, one of them is Mercedes' brother. The other one is Mercedes' husband. And they just bicker and bicker. and It's just annoying to see to hear the stuff they do. But it's, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, it's kind of the male archetype is to just like have an ego and say my truck's big in your truck and all that you know i remember the, the huge ego on a, on a country singer named toby keith and now he's dead so it doesn't really matter how big your ego is he had a song i want to talk about me you want to talk about mike i'd say that's ego anyway that's certainly it's not a death sentence but he did die of cancer recently um which is a trip because he's one of those like indefatigable images in my mind of a country singer. Who's your daddy? That's another one he does, which is pretty cool, but it's so overt. I mean, when I say that to women, you know, it's it's a joke. But he in that song, he's he is <laughs> not joking. He's having an affair with women that are like half his age. Um, what's half my age? Let's see, I'm 55. So that would be, you cut 50 and a half, you got 25 and then two and a half. So 27 and a half. So my jail bait, I guess, is 27 and a half. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to get back to the topic here. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I love the 60s. I mean, I look at women in movies like, you know, there's a show called Columbo. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but... The women have the best 60s skirts and dresses, and I just love that shit. I just love the 60s, and I'm hoping, you know, to find, buy a furnished house one day with hardwood floors in Orange Circle over there uh, in California, Southern California. If you know Orange Circle, it's by uh, Chapman College, Chapman University, really. Um, I believe I talked about that a little bit in my... my uh, Actually, no, I did not. I'm thinking of something else. You know, one thing that I've really been guilty of is doing too many things online. I really, I go through waves in my career of whatever you call it, of being a creator of things online. And uh, I think I've just been burning that candle too much at both ends. It's okay, I'll survive, but I'm going to start, I'm going to challenge myself. Excuse me, it's late, but I had a deadline, so I'm trying to get this finished. Sorry, it's really rude. And I am not an intellectual, uh, you know, I'm not like a guy providing you summaries of these chapters. This is my blog. This is my personal diary. And I just kind of use the movies as an excuse, something to talk about as I'm rapping about my life. I hate your fuck no good guts but i'm not bitter do you remember that song oh my god that was such a hilarious song it's like a country song dr demento type song but yeah watch colombo there's so many films or uh, films and uh flowers for algernon which became the movie charlie with chris robertson's that one is really got some hotties in it and it everything is retro you know, I'm, I collect things that are kind of 60s retro, and I'm hoping, that's what I was going to say earlier, I'm hoping, you know, that I can get a prefurbished house that's all 60s. <laughs> yeah, that's not something you just order up. That's something the universe gives you as a desire, and I've had it for quite some time now. I've told you all about it uh, through my various ways, and um, yeah, I think I'm just going to need to simplify now. Now that I've already declared what I want from the universe, it just doesn't do any good to just... I don't know, toil in these little projects. It's time to just let the projects be, let the project be, which is Riley on Film. So go to RileyOnFilm.com and see the project evolve. He uses the word sex quite a bit when talking about um, 
Mercedes, and I have to say, I had to go back and read it again because I, I did think he was talking about intercourse. Uh, you know, love American style. Remember that show? It's all about sex. The 60s were all about sex. I was conceived June 9th. Uh, I, should I say the year? Should people know my birth date? No. I'm 55, so you can do the math. But anyway, I have a weird birthday, 6969. I swear to God, that's my birthday. When I go to the DMV and stuff, or anywhere where I'm up close, like the bank, and there's a reason to for, to see my birthday or bring it up as a topic, I get that. Sometimes I, if she's hot, she gives me that one eyebrow. Even if she's not hot, people laugh at that because it's 69, dude. It's like the 60s position, you know. Um, certainly not my favorite position yeah, at all. I'd have given it a shot many times, but yeah, there's people freaking love that. Anyway, so it's easy to remember, and I always make people blush when I say my birthday. 69, 69. So there you go. We all have little things that we can claim our own, and my birthday is, you know, makes me a miracle. I, I really feel that way. But anyway, so Mercedes, she sounds hot. She loses a lot of weight. It's all about not being able to get everybody the food that they need. So obviously they had didn't know anything about law of attraction. And if they were sledding dogs here this time in my lifetime, I would say you need to be mindfulness and you need to be thankfulness and really, really uh, get lost. Don't not, you know, meditate. Don't not rest. Like people that do that, I, I you know, I guess I used to be one of them. I used to be a workaholic, but we're called to rest you know we're told to rest like i think every religion that i've ever studied i've studied probably four or five of them they all say rest that's like an important aspect so why don't we i'm about to once i get this podcast for tonight done i'm gonna hit the saccharoni saccharoni but anyway women of the 60s are beautiful and most of them are great grandmothers now if they're still alive just throwing that out there Sometimes I don't, I don't even need to make points. I just, I feel like I should just say things like factoids, you know, Columbo could not figure it out. The flowers were freshly cut. Go. See what I mean? Stream of consciousness it and then just let the listener, you just kind of go off and go nuts with it. That's probably what I'm going to start doing. Ads are not really paying me. I keep getting closer to the $100 threshold, but I just don't seem to be moving fast enough. And so it tells me I have like 70 bucks, but you don't get paid from Google until, you know, the Google ads. You don't get paid. It's called AdSense, actually. Okay, I'm just getting way off track here. So this isn't a podcast telling you how I monetize my blog. Although I used to have a pod, uh, I used to have a website where all I did was that. I uh, you can look up one of my pride and joy mentees is Justin Germano with a G. If you look him up, you're gonna find Dragon Blogger this and Dragon Blogger that. He kind of went nuts, but I mentored him, and he will tell you that. I am not speaking untruth. I mentored him, and it it happened like this. He came to me and said, how do you do this, or something, I think, something like that, on WordPress. WordPress used to have an interactive area where you could chat and stuff. So we started communicating, and, and I told him, I said, you know, why don't you just do this, why don't you do this? And he just started, I think, as I recall, he's a real agreeable guy, but I think he started arguing with me. And so I just kind of envisioned, like, more arguments with him and what we were talking about was like so obvious it was about putting an rss feed on your blog as i recall i've helped a lot of people so i might be confusing justin if you're out there listening i'll send this to you but anyway uh comment buddy so justin just went nuts and now the last i last i heard from him he was a wells fargo bank it guy so that already is a pretty good job but he was also um, trying to get this little blog started on a free WordPress.com blog called Dragon Blogger. 
And he would tell me that he had all these ideas about, you know, what he wanted to do, and he wanted to make it like Amazon, but there's reviewers on there, and then later on, the reviewers got paid, and I was a reviewer, but I never made the threshold, so I didn't make money for his site. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, I'm just trying to tell you that that's not something I'm just, like, wading into and then saying, okay, I'm not going to talk about that. I mean, I could literally write a book about blogs, but not so much now. That was back in, I think I met him in 2004 or 2005, and then we remained friends, and, you know, I joke around saying he was my mentee, but, you know, you do, if you want to help people, sometimes you got to smack them in the face and say, show a little respect. I mean, seriously, <laughs> that's a whole different episode. <clears throat> okay, let's get into the book. So they're talking about sex a lot, but really they're just talking about gender. Um, she has a grievance of sex, he calls it, because she has to watch her brother and her husband just go at it and fight, and their egos fight, just like the dogs. I mean, you got to remember that this book is about people. I really believe that. I think if Jack London were still around, and who knows, maybe he did an interview where he admitted that, but it's just so clear to me that this is not like a kid's story about dogs. This is a story about the human struggle, the essence of suffering that we're all born into. That's Buddhism. And, uh, you know, there's nobody coming to the rescue. That's one thing about Christian-based stories. Somebody already always comes to the rescue because... You know, that's what God did by sending his son and bloodied him up. And now finally your sinful ass can talk to God. Sorry to be so rude, I, but I taught this stuff for years. I was taught it and then I taught it. and I'm just so sorry that I brought so much blood and self, you know, loathing to the world. And I'm not about that anymore. And I'm so proud of that fact, so I'm not embarrassed. I hope you'll still listen, though. I mean, if you are a Christian. I live in a Christian infested area. Um, you know, I I don't know why they're related, but it's also a kind of a Trump uh, behemoth place, and uh, yeah, it just you know it just kind of boggles the mind sometimes why people get so religious and get so into Trump. I just and now this generation, like they participate in a fallacy that. Trumpism is like a religion. So anyway, it's fine if you want to be religious, but I would say put the Dusty Black book on the shelf and get out there and find somebody that really excites you and then fuck their brains out. No, just kidding. Marry him, I guess. I'm looking for a companion. I I would really like a companion. I, I've learned... I've been out of my marriage now for... I'm in the fourth year. Three years have passed since I was kicked out. And that hurt really bad. But, you know, I look back on it and I just think, good riddance to bad rubbish, you know. Um, if somebody doesn't want to stay the course with you and, you know, keep continuing on the 10K race of life, let them go, you know. Let them go. I am sick of people, though, who, who say, who's for the best? No, it wasn't for the best. I almost died. I went through severe depression. I lost my best friend. My best friend didn't give a shit that I was sad. I mean, she said she cried and all that, but you know what? Let him go. Seriously, I wish it didn't take me so long to figure that out, um, but it did. But the neat thing about taking a long time to figure something out, especially something really deep and painful and emotional like divorce is that you won't do it again. And so that's why I would like a companion. And my dear sister tells me that all women want to be married. Okay. Or even saying some women want to be married. I just think it's overreaching. What do you want? Obviously, she wants to be married. So why does that have to become every woman? You know? It's just a little thing on humility there. So, yeah. Okay, so Buck gets beaten the crap out of him, and I think the fact that they have this woman motif is is integral to what Jack London wanted to do when Buck just gets his head bashed in. He's not dead, um, but 
one of the mushers just keeps hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. You know, like the Law of Club and Fang. Remember back in chapter, I think it was two. The Law of Club and Fang. You don't go outside the boundary of the club or you get the club. That's what that's about. And, you know, ne uh, not negative reinforcement. I learned that that's something different. Um, and maybe if he's listening, my friend, uh, uh, you know, I'd call him a friend slash shrink because he's just my friend, but he offers me a lot of good advice and maybe he would know how to kind of flesh that one out. But all I really want to talk about, we're halfway through guys, or no, a lot more than halfway through. It's 21 minutes. That means we have nine minutes left. I try to do 30 minutes limits on these um even though some of the chapters require a lot more and some are just kind of passing chapters are real short have you ever read moby dick by herman melville if you look at moby dick moby dick is like what reminds me of when i write one of my books because i just go to the blog and i just like you know when you like on a pc you left click at the very bottom of the content of the blog and then you just go rink up to the top with your mouse and it selects all the way up to the top. You know what I'm talking about? That's how I write books. I just, I write blog posts all the time and when it's time to write books, I just paste them in there and I just adjust things. I'm getting to where I let pros come out, you know, but uh, I don't know. Life's kind of busy, so I just don't really... It, to me, it's not productive to sit here and make a table of contents and just, boom, I'm going to sit down and write a book a little every day. No, I already have, like, plenty of that I've already said. So I bounce off that, and then I make comments on my own stuff. Authorial masturbation, if you will. All right, so the brothers fight. Uh, it's intense. This one is very brutal, and... This one, if my buddy, uh, compadre out there, Richard, um, good lord, my cat won't shut up. Okay, I'm gonna let her out. Hold on a second. I told you a while back, I don't, I don't want to edit these. You get 30 minutes of me talking about the chapter. Would you shut your mouth, Cleo? Fine, go out, and guess what? You're staying out all night. Go. Watch her not go out. Okay, good, she's going out. She brings me little lizards and stuff. She's a cutie pie. Alright. She's like, you're talking. I want to talk. I did find out an interesting factoid about cats. I have two kitties. Um, when they meow, that's not natural. They don't meow in, in the wild. Uh, it's, a, it's what they call a vocalization for their owners. It's vocalization for humans. Which I find fascinating. But I digress from the call of the wild. So first the guy just beats the living crud and I the name of the guy escapes me. Um, but it's one of the men. And then you've got Mercedes, the sex lady. No, she's not a sex lady. He's referring to gender. When he uses the word sex, he's not... And he you could interpret it that way. And of course, you know, I have sex on the brain pretty much 24-7, 365. Except when I'm sleeping and then I have wet dreams. Anyway, um, now that I've shared all that wonderful stuff, you know, this is just a this is this is just a little aside, but I just want to say this real quick. Um, I listen to these consciousness women that talk about, you know, you were attracted to this video because your self love factor is falling, and you've got to work on it. So they just they're basically saying. Okay, there's this cosmic sorter, and wherever you are, you're going to be transported to wherever you need to be, and that's how the universe works. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I've got an open mind more and more as I get older. But yeah, so sex meets gender when he talks about her. This is not like a tawdry novel from the 2000s, you know. This, I think it was written in the turn of century, like 1923 or something like that. Maybe even 910. And then they did the first letter to a fan, uh, I think, uh, after that. So, are you proud of me? I got like 25 minutes under my belt talking about this insane chapter. I know you guys read it because I told you to read it and I want you to read it. And this is going to be a really neat little collection of uh, reviews and my life and 
I call that an online diary. Um, I used to have some other words for blogging, but I can't remember what they are. Uh, at any rate, the sled dogs at the end, how'd you like that? When they just kind of paraded into the ice? That was insane. Um, and then one of the men is just beating the tar out of uh, Buck, and it's one of the most amazing descriptions of uh, I think human, but it's really talking about the dog. But I think, you know, there are certain humans in certain places that really are not far from here. Um, yeah, and so anyway, all I was going to say is this consciousness teacher that I like, I'm not going to say her name, but she purposely just puts her boob out on the table when she's talking. I'm not kidding. Well... I know that she knows what she's doing. I'm sorry, you know. It's the whole she don't know she's beautiful thing, but eh, no, not buying it. She's putting that boob right there on the shelf right there while she talks. And, uh, you know, she has a shirt on. But I really enjoyed those episodes when she does that. She's done it on a few of them, a few of her episodes on her podcast. I'm not going to share it because this is a vulgar comment. But... She just kind of plops that boob right there as she's talking. And, uh, you know, then I mention something and then I'm the bad one. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's like, I, I love women and I would never accuse them of, you know, their own demise or their own, you know, discomfort or their, or their own violation. I would never say that's her fault. She wanted it. Although people do, mostly Christians, talk like that, you know. They say if she was doing her Bible study and her knit, her knitting and, uh, you know, crying for their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all that stuff, then it, the bad stuff wouldn't have happened. And, and it's just people, we are in a war right now. You just remember that that is the biggest hunk of bullshit that's ever been shared. And that's pretty much 99% of the Christians up here that I meet. I mean, I don't meet anybody that's going on. I used to know this Christian guy. And he's from Australia. I guess give me an example. This is real versus what we see today, like at Walmart. These fuckers driving around with their stupid ass, you know, Trump shit all over everything. They're so dumb. They're so misled. I'm not going to say dumb. I am going to say misled. And I'd love to do a show on that, but I don't even want to bring it in. I See, that's my negative vibes, and I don't really need to be talking about it. So I will just like, in my last concept, I'm going to say in two and a half minutes or two minutes and 10 seconds is we need women and women run the world and women give life to the world. To me, like if you want to say a God is like a personal God, I think God would be better suited, explained as a woman. But I also believe that to me, God can be a being, but more than anything, it's just the freaking stuff you marvel at. That's that's my idea of God. Not the bloody sepulcher. Uh, although, you know, there are times it floated my boat, but honestly, looking back, I don't think, I think I wasted so much time. I really did. So let's not waste time anymore. How about it? You want to go to the lake with us tomorrow? Me and Bella are going... We're going to go to Laguna Beach. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited because I've been regular at this and it's been so fun. And it's brought the call of the wild alive for me. So why don't you get a copy and just read it? I mean, if you haven't you know, read it already, um, I think you'll find you know, there's a lot of lead-ins. The stuff I've done in the video, which you could already see. You could preview the video on YouTube. This is what I tell people all freaking day long. Here's my card. I'm playing at the hilltop. I'm trying to fill the place up. I'm outside on the big stage. Do you like music? Oh, that's cool. You like Nine Inch Nails? Right on. No. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing every freaking day, guys. I just got 500 new business cards, and they're really, really cool looking. Um, yeah, and without any further ado, we've got two more. I'm going to do, uh, but yeah, this is a, just a real quick summary. This is about family and the struggling. You know, every vacation I've ever gone on with my family, there's some kind of argument that, you know, 
just sort of pops up and, and it's just something about being on vacation with your family you're just like vulnerable or something because you want comfort but you don't recognize anything i don't know that's just a total guess what do you think i will see you two more chapters and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do next i think i'm missing horror people next time